Dude, that I didn't even. We, That's we, where the real money when is. When we had um, when we had RFK on, I didn't even fucking know this shit. But um, I didn't know like when we're sending money to Ukraine, we're not really even sending money there. We're sending money to American military manufacturers to make weapons, and then the mo- the weapons go to Ukraine. Duh. But we're paying us. Yeah. But you can't really but say- But also th- some money goes over there too, and but that money- a fraction. Money, enough, billions, and that money's like, woo! Where to go? Yeah, dudes are doing coke and driving around Rolls Royces and balling. Oh, I saw that. The guy bought the, uh, yeah, what was it? The assistant- um, it was the. It wasn't the vice president, but it was some like government figure bought like some insane car, and it's yeah. like, why are you buying insane cars when you're in the middle of a war? How do you have the money? Yeah, there might be some rations you might want to yeah. buy. Yeah. Okay, so so okay, so there's the system. I think Vivek called it like the managerial class or mm-hmm. something like that, which I thought was a good term. But okay, the money is going to these different industries first, so it's kind of staying yeah. in America. Which does, I guess, boost our economy in some way. Like those people need to hire people. The economy starts That's to a do. That's a good way to look at it. No, but I mean, like, <laughs> no, no, for real. Like, it's like they have to hire people. They yeah. have to pay people. Like, yeah. and that's why war is good for the economy. And if yeah. the economy is built built on this military industrial complex or whatever it is, yeah. we constantly need conflict to in order in order to continue the, um, uh, the the positive momentum of the economy. Yes. But they can't say that. They can't go. Hey, we need war in order for the economy to be good. They're not thinking about the economy. They're thinking about the money that they are specifically going to make from these transactions. They're, they're not thinking about, oh, we're going to do this good for the economy. They're thinking this is an opportunity to get a massive contract. Mm-hmm. They're in the business of constantly making more money. When you're in a corporation, especially a publicly traded corporation, mm-hmm. you have an obligation to your shareholders mm-hmm. to make more money. Mm-hmm. You have a board. You have people that have dumped $100 million in their, into the company, and they're staring at you. And you're like, what are we doing to maximize profits? And just like... If you're, you know, working for CNN, you know, if someone starts saying the the, the vaccines might be killing kids, y- you got to step in and go, there's no evidence for this. You got to cover. Yeah. You're covering for this. Yeah. Everyone's covering. And if you're uh, the head of a corporation, it's your job to get these contracts. It's a sociopathic sort of a situation. No one's looking at it like, what is the big picture? Does this really need to be ha- – isn't there some sort of a diplomatic approach that can be made? What were the factors that led us to get into the situation in the first place? What's yeah. going on with NATO? Yeah. Why are they moving weapons closer and closer to, to Russia's border? Yeah. Maybe – there's a diplomatic solution that could stop the death of hundreds of thousands, thousands of, of people. innocent people. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, make that chatter. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, 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 And, yeah, and yeah. then attach it to different bills, right? Like attach it to the border yeah. bill. Yeah, yeah, attach yeah, yeah. it to the fucking, the, yeah, yeah. attach to the <laughs> education bill. That randomly has no, money we gotta to educate, we gotta educate those Russians about our fucking bombs. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the education bill. They got to yeah. know about a Tomahawk missile, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how do you how do you stop that? Money. And the problem is it's already been embedded, right? It's like trying to tell the mob you can't make money anymore. Like, you, you have to do some radical things to get the mob out of businesses, right? And that's what they had to do with Giuliani in New York with mm. the John Gotti and the families and the, locking everybody up. Like, you... You can't just say, hey, guys, stop doing that. That's that's what they do. It's yeah. what they do. That's what they did with Iraq. That's what they did with Afghanistan. That's yeah. what they did with Vietnam. Yeah. They do it with everything. Yeah. They, they. That's what Eisenhower warned the American people about when he was, when he leaving, was leaving office, office yeah, yeah. which is one of the craziest videos in human history, yeah. where he's saying the military industrial complex yeah. wants to go to war. There's a machine that wants to go to war, and you have to be very so careful of it. what is the history of this? So what, World War II, yeah. the whole country turns into a war machine? Is exactly. that essentially? And which was beneficial for us, sure. right? Great for the economy, great for a lot of things, great to unite us. Great for us. freedom, right. great for not speaking fucking German mm-hmm. for the rest of our existence. But, and, and by, it turns into... A war machine like four just starts making tanks like everybody shifts their goal right is that essentially what happens when well a lot of people definitely shift their i mean ford obviously kept making cars but like a lot of people do shift their but their i think businesses. ford also started making military vehicles did they Makes my, sense. That was my understanding is that like every business start to prioritize the war effort. Right. And then Definitely. not overnight, but pretty quickly, the whole country had one singular focus, which was if we need to go to war, 
yeah. we can turn it over. It's like, uh, I think that's what Napoleon did, actually. That was one of the, how he was so effective. He turned the whole country into a war machine. Yeah. Whereas before, it was like, wait, I thought we're just lining up in the field and banging back and forth against each other. He's like, no, no, you're fighting the whole country. So then when we get to turn over and flip and Ford starts making vehicles or whatever the fuck it needs for the military effort, we have a huge competitive advantage. The money that comes in through that, and fact check me on this, please, but like the money that starts to be generated by that is very hard to relinquish when the war is done. Right. The war stops and then people go, whoa, 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 whoa. we were making 100 million a year during war. Right. I don't want to go back to 20 million. Right. So we need more wars. Yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah, that's that's a bit, definitely a part of the idea. It's also connected to a lot of other things, too, that you wouldn't think about, well, yeah. like subsidizing food. Wait, what, what? So subsidizing farmers. So like when you hear about corn subsidies, yeah. like we have corn subsidies, that's why there's corn syrup and everything. Yeah. And there's, you know, we picked corn. a crop that could feed 300 million people, and it just happened to be corn. Well, what happened was during World War II, they started to uh, subsidize farmers so that they would have a surplus. So in case another war breaks out— We're Good. They always have they they have food storage. Right. They have the ability to feed the country even if we're cut off from the rest of the world. And when you're dependent upon foreign countries for different things like grains and medicines, and that's one of the things we found out during COVID, right? A lot of medicine is made in China, and a lot of it was very hard to come by yeah. d during during COVID because of the transportation issues. Isn't that one of the issues with Ukraine? I'm is sure. that there's not not with uh, medicine, but with actual grain. Like it's one of the largest grain producers right. in the world. Yes. So I think there even had to be like an agreement between Russia and Ukraine to continue sending out grain during the conflict. Wild. Wild. No. Look at this. Whoa. Boom. Look how they're sliding all over the place. I mean, that is fucking ice. Yeah. That guy can't stop his car. Look. Look, he's just going to slide in that car behind him. This is oh ridiculous. Is that important? can't stop it. Oh, shit. Boom. And, and that car's going. sliding. They're all sliding. The whole thing is ice. That is fucking terrifying. 